From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of Hot Chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Okay, so... If you were with us last week, you know who my guest is. Mm -hmm. And if you've been listening to the show for a while, you know who my guest is because he's been on more than any other guest I've ever had. He is someone very close to me. He's my son, David Altizer. David, welcome. I am your son. I am David Altizer. And I also go by Dave Mays. I know you guys have been sitting there waiting for an entire week for the next installment of this episode. Or if it's a podcast, you just, you know, and you're listening to this later, you just went to the next episode. But here we are. Here we are, uh, part two of, of uh, Dave. David is talking to me about filmmaking, uh, documentary filmmaking, uh, to be exact. Uh-huh. And um, if you missed uh, part one, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and you can uh, catch up. You can listen there. Or you can go to any place where podcasts are played, and you can uh, search for The Rick Altizer Show. And you can hear David. Dave, Dave Mays uh, is the host <laughs> of the Golden Hour podcast. That's right. And he talks. Tell us about the Golden Hour podcast. I interview filmmakers, uh, Instagrammers, YouTubers. I'm trying to get as many YouTubers as I can because I think that's the next uh, generation of television. We're seeing it continue to get uh, bigger and bigger, more and more money, more and more eyeballs on it. People are watching TV less and watching YouTube more. It's the number two site in the world. Um, it'll just continue to keep going. So I find it fascinating interviewing these YouTubers. So, And if you're interested in that topic, uh, David has been on my show probably about five times talking about how to start a YouTube channel, how to amortize a YouTube channel, some of the uh, ins and outs of that. So you can search search my show, find that. And also the Golden Hour podcast has yeah. lots of good content on that. I, I would highly recommend Hayden Hillier-Smith. He's the editor for Logan Paul. I had an interview with him. If you're not familiar with Logan Paul, he just fought Floyd Mayweather. And he's one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. And uh, we had a, a whole two-part episode with Hayden. Very fascinating. He won a Streamy, which is the Oscars for internet video. Um, he's, he was, he wore, won a streamy for best editor. So really cool interview. Go check it out. Awesome. <laughs> well, anyway, Dave, thanks for being here. And, uh, I had a great time last week, which was just a few minutes ago. Cause we do, uh, yes. we are, we are taping this of course uh, on tape on tape. Uh, so yeah, w- let's pick up where we left off. We were <laughs> talking about, <laughs> we're, <laughs> it's okay. It's a habit. I'm sure you, you've said tape for so long. It's just, uh, yeah, it, it also, it's not cool to say it's recorded on a memory card. You know, <laughs> nobody says that. Um, we still say films. We're not shooting on film. No, you we're know. shooting on a memory card. Uh, yeah. So uh, we l- last week we were talking about uh, documentaries, how you started, kind of the 30, 40 years of experience being a human being in the music space and watching a lot of movies that may have helped with the documentaries and then obviously how to interview. Um, now we can pick up where we left off, which would be, okay, you've done your interview. You've... Um, practiced being an interviewer maybe you can even practice uh in real life with people when you're sitting across the table from them and ask them thought-provoking questions and um kind of maybe it will almost feel uncomfortable do you ever feel uncomfortable asking some of these questions well there are times well uh, you know one thing i didn't say last week was that part of the interview process is i'm praying mm-hmm. as i'm doing it i'm praying god show me what to say you know ask give me guidance and I'll do that a lot with, with, with guy friends when we're sitting across the table. Sure. And there are times where I'll say, do you mind if I ask you a you know, personal question? Do you mind talking about you know, this? And so we'll get into some heavy, heavy subjects. Um, and there have been times where people have said things, and it's, it's made me wonder. And I'll say, you know, do you mind if I ask you, were you ever abused as a child? You know, mm. Something that was, you, you know, and then um, the responses have been, you know, I've never talked about this. And, you know, but yeah. so just asking that question, being being sensitive and aware yeah. is so important. And also being in prayer about it. You know, sometimes God will, I mean, we both believe God is real and that he communicates to us and that he, you know, loves us and guides us. And so mm. I'd, I completely felt on Show Me the Father, God was sure. was guiding me through that. Absolutely. Which was a huge part of the interview process as well. But uh yeah, that that's a that's a big part of it is is in those times we talked about last week, don't be that guy who sits across the table and just talks about themselves and never asks a question. Mm-hmm. How are you? How's your marriage? How are you doing? How are your kids? How 
you know, yeah. why do you like that job? What are you doing? You know, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? How does that make you feel? Um, those are important questions to ask. And we talked last week about how give me information. That's one thing. How you feel about that information is another thing. And so you can do that. You can do that in your in your relationships, in your friends, when you're going out to lunch with someone. And I'll tell you what, when you have those kinds of questions mm-hmm. with your lunch buddy, I have a lunch buddy. We get together every every two weeks. And when you ask somebody something like that, you know, and you talk about something that was deep or hurtful or painful in their life, boy, does that strengthen your relationship. I sure. mean, what a great friendship. And you're, it's the kind of friends where you, you can talk to them about anything. They can talk to you about anything. But you have to pay attention. You have to ask. You mm-hmm. have to. And so having that in your own personal relationships is a great skill to have when you're, when you're interviewing people. Yeah. To be engaging, to be open, to be someone that is safe, that does, they don't feel like you're being judged when mm-hmm. you're asking questions. And mm-hmm. having that person feel safe with you. And the gold happens when you get them connecting to something that they haven't connected with before mm-hmm. or they're discovering something that they didn't know about themselves or that maybe they've never talked about before. Mm-hmm. When you get that on camera, that's, mm-hmm. that's gold. And I would, I would maybe suggest – I don't know if this is – I'm just kind of making this up on the spot here. But if, if you find yourself – you love documentary filmmaking, you love filmmaking, you're maybe a great shooter, great editor, um, but you maybe are just naturally lacking this ability, finding a partner in a business sense that maybe is better relationally could be a great asset for you if you want to go into documentary filmmaking. Maybe, like I said, you're, you're, you, you lack that relational element. And it's just really hard for you to get super deep. If you have a friend or you know somebody who, who you could literally hire to come in and be an interviewer, you, you feed them the direction and the theme of your documentary. You have this very relational almost – I mean, honestly, you could probably find a therapist or a counselor – and hire them to be an interviewer for your documentary, that might be a, a good asset for you as a storyteller. I don't know. I just thought it would of that. be. I mean, a big part of the director's, a big part of the directing mm-hmm. and the writing is the, the interview. I mean, that's a big part of it. Totally. Is, is how you do the interview. And you, 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 are very blessed in that you have that skill. You have the storytelling skill, the audio skills, you know, all these things. Not everybody has all these talents. Um, I would say obviously a lot of the best directors do, but um, you know David Fincher, for example, he's a world-renowned director. He's never written a single film. He always hires and works with writers, you know, and then he directs the film. So you don't have to have all these skill sets. Uh, Steve Jobs famously had Steve Wozniak, who was the computer genius, mm-hmm. and then Steve sold the computers. Sure. You know? Did he ever? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so absolutely. Um, yeah, I would just look at therapists on YouTube. There's a great – I just thought of it while we were talking. Noisy, the YouTube channel, Noisy, N-O-I-S-E-Y. They have a, a whole series called The Therapist. I think I may have sent you some. They've interviewed rock stars and rappers. And The Therapist like gets really deep. He's like, why do you sing about these topics? One of my favorite ones is with Corey Taylor from Slipknot. He's the singer of Slipknot. And he was abused and had all these things. And The Therapist gets really under that. Because at first he's like, why do you sing about all these terrible things? And he's like, I don't know. And then he gets into it sure. and he's like, oh, actually I was abused. You know, right. And there's a lot of good research online on YouTube to, to, if you want help on how to interview. That's And the reason we're staying on this topic for so long is because it's such an important key ingredient to the storytelling of documentaries. That's the thread line of the whole thing. And therapy, I mean, it really is – like a therapy session in a lot of ways when you're when you're interviewing people and they're telling about their situation or their story, but you're helping them process. Mm-hmm. Cause again, I keep coming back to that. How you feel about it is a whole different conversation than what happened. And many of your beauty piece films on music artists or whatever is, Oh, this album was so great. And then they made this record. Then they made this record. Then they made that record. And boy, aren't they good? Boy, they're so good. You know, and they never get into the, well, the Rick Rubin, Paul McCartney uh, yes. series on Hulu was wonderful because Rick Rubin really got deep on like, what made you think to, p- he interviewed Paul McCartney. Like, how did you, why, wh- nobody would think of I love this, that. You know? that, was, that was so good. I, I, I binged that because I couldn't <laughs> stop watching it. It was so great. But he, he was asking the right questions that any musician would die sure, to ask yeah. Paul. Oh, I've, th- it's so funny because if I was going to have an hour with Paul or two hours with Paul, 
Like what he was talking about. That's what I would want to talk about. Why? That baseline was totally out of left field. Mm-hmm. No one was doing that. What? Where? Where were you when you were doing? You know, what made you think of that? You <laughs> yeah. know, but but uh, but he also was constantly affirming Paul. Everything he would say he was nodding along, paying close attention. Obviously, he's Paul McCartney, so I think anybody would be happy to be well, no, looking in his eyes. But see, that's where uh, a music producer, a record producer, where I did produced uh, artists, yeah. and a director. You see a lot of those people, a lot of music producers will become directors sure. because it's the same skill set. You have to be, you, you've got an artist, you're trying to get the best performance out of that artist. Yeah. And the way you do that isn't by being negative or critical towards them and getting them all self-conscious. Mm-hmm. You're, you're constantly going, that was so good. That was great. And so I'll say that a lot when I'm interviewing, you know, like if, if they're having to focus, hey, can you hang on a second? I just got to get this in focus or I need to change this card or whatever. Yeah. Throughout, I'll stop. I'll say, you're doing such a good job. This is so good. And invariably they go, is it really? <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they're nervous. They're, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Tony Evans or whatever. And they're, they're nervous. They're concerned. Is it, you know, am I doing good? Is this okay? Especially when you're interviewing just normal people who sure. aren't used to being in front of the camera. Sure. That's where you really have to pour it on. You totally. Know, you're doing great. You're doing <clears throat> such a good job. Stephen told me something that was really interesting. He Stephen said, Kendrick. Stephen Kendrick, yeah, thanks for clarifying that. He said, uh, a celebrity you want to treat like a normal person, and a normal person you want to treat like, like a, a celebrity. celebrity. That's great. That's a great idea. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. want to make a normal person feel like they're a celebrity. Uh-huh. But if it's a celebrity, you just want to, you just want to talk to them like they're a normal person. Yeah, yeah, You don't want to throw it on with them because they get that all the time. Yeah. And so that really – that was such good uh, – helped me as well. So – Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, what an honor to be here with you. You know, just some normal guy, right? Sure, sure, sure. And you're, they're going, real, real. An honor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being here with your cameras. You know, oh, you're doing such a good job. So that's so important mm. to, to help them feel comfortable is that affirmation, feel, you know, feeling they're not being judged by you. And, and, and you're giving this eye contact and you're showing concern when, they're, when something's going on that they're talking about something serious. But then finding that way to dig a little deeper Mm-hmm. You know, how did that feel? Or, wow, you know, did you did you ever have any? You know, maybe even you bring up a, a, a serious question. Did you ever yeah. have any abuse as a child? Yeah, you know, I mean, you get them to see where they'll go or whatever the topic is. You know, sure. Not that that's what you're going to. Well, do a lot of <coughs> yeah, yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was an intern one time here in Nashville for a production company that did higher production music videos and and stuff. And we did we shot a music video for uh, One Republic, and. I was literally just a, a, a PA on that uh, because I was interning for them. And the only reason I took that job was because I just wanted some set time, some real like movie set experience. And the director, I noticed the thing that really stood out to me that, and everybody loved him and he was very successful here in Nashville. The The reason he was so successful and I noticed this was like he was behind camera looking at One Republic, these superstars, and the whole time they were singing their music video, it's like, yes, oh my gosh, yes, amazing, wow, yes, you look so good, just over and over and over. Right. And I was like, this is over the top, but these guys who are performing, they're like singing their heart out, they're like being these performers, and behind the camera, this guy is just pumping them up, you know, right. just like a, just like an athlete needs a coach to just be like, applauding you them it. you yes. can do it go, yeah. go 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 get him yeah and uh that's the extreme version obviously a music video they're not recording the audio so he can't but you scream want that at high them. energy on a music video i mean totally. that was a great director he's he's getting what he needs so as a doing a documentary yes what is it do i need i need real i don't need phony mm-hmm. i need deep and i need thoughtful and uh or or informational or whatever it is i want to create an, an environment that's mm-hmm. comfortable for that. And people mirror what you're doing. So by you nodding along, by you getting emotional while they get emotional, you're encouraging them to be emotional because they're mirroring what you're doing. If you were like looking at your phone as they're saying something real emotional, they'll just kind of like trail off and look up into the sky and then kind of be like, oh, he doesn't care, you know. And it's so important also to, like you said, like be very positive. If they say something that you weren't really wanting, you don't say – I don't, I don't want to talk about that or eh, we don't need that. You say, great. That's great. And what, how did that make you feel? Right. Or, and now can we talk about blank? You know, it, it's never, you're just adding on top of what they give you. You don't ever negatively say like, uh, yeah, I don't need that. You know, don't, let's not talk about that, you know, right. or whatever. Exactly. Right? And, and I noticed I, it, it, 
I, I really paid attention to this on this last movie because you know, as I've done five, you know, I've, I've gotten I've gotten better. I mean, uh-huh. I've, I've learned a few things. That I, I hope didn't you know. would. Yeah, and, and and again, I had no training. You know, I had no idea what I'm even doing this for. But after doing five, I've learned you know a couple of things, and so I, you can also help connect dots for people. Like for instance, yeah. Stephen Kendrick in the movie Show Me the Father was talking about he had adopted uh, his daughter from China. And on the way back from the plane, it was the longest, it was the longest 12 hour flight ever. She's crying. She doesn't know, you know, and he said to her, he said, she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know she's Mia Elizabeth Kendrick. You know, she doesn't know who she is. Mm -hmm. And so as he's saying that I'm connecting, wow, that's so many, that's been me. Mm -hmm. I don't know who I am so many times. I don't really know that God's my father and I don't Mm -hmm. really know. So I'm able to connect with him a a part of my own story. And I'm able to say, you know, there's so many people who don't know who they are. They don't know that God is their father. And I've struggled with that. And they don't know that there's a loving father for them. And they don't know how to deal with that, you know, Mm -hmm. and they're functional orphans. Right. Mm -hmm. So I said that word to him. I said, would you mind commenting on that? So then he then basically repeats what I just said Mm -hmm. uh, in his own words and adds things to it. Of course, you know, sure. Many times Stephen Kendrick would make it way better because he's really good at that. But I was able to help him functional orphan. You know, Mm -hmm. that was something I was able to communicate to him. And then he said it. And now it's in the film. Sure. So and when you're you're sorry, I was going to say when you're on camera, too, you kind of blank out sometimes. Like if you're the person on the lens with all the lights, there's all this pressure. Um, I've found becoming a YouTuber, even though I had experience as a performer, as a magician, as soon as the lens is on you, especially if there's people involved just standing there waiting for you to perform, you kind of blank out your brain. So having that to help really, um, really, really helps. And and you can help then – that's part of the writing of a director, of, of yeah. how he's writing or helping write that script uh, of the documentary is that I'm hearing something and I'm connecting it with the story that I would think is important for us to tell, mm-hmm. which was a huge part of this particular movie, Show Me the Father, which was uh, a big underlying theme of it was we we kind of the way we deal with our earthly fathers mm-hmm. is a, if we project that onto God and we struggle with God from some of our struggles we've had with our earthly fathers or we have. Uh, an easy time with God because our fathers were good at that particular thing. So Mm -hmm. um, when I heard that, she doesn't know who she is and say, Ooh, Ooh. you know, (laughs) so paying attention and Mm -hmm. then being able to help them connect some of those dots. And that's part of the conversation. It's not just, I'm just asking questions. Sometimes I'm talking and sharing Mm -hmm. my story Mm -hmm. with them and then saying, can you comment on that? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's more conversational and they feel, then they feel, Sometimes I'll share real intimate things about myself, mm-hmm. and then that makes it safe for them to do that. Yeah. Index cards. What do you think of when you think of index cards? Evil. <laughs> why is that? Why, why for, are for index interview, cards for evil the interview for you? Or, or in the writing process? In the, so, yeah. I mean, now we're moving on to the editing writing process. Okay. At the, after the interview. Yeah. After the interview. Oh, okay. Okay. Index yeah. cards. Yes. <laughs> So you have a thing with index cards. Yes, Let's I talk do. about that. Okay. So I, I, uh, <laughs> I never knew how to, I had never taken a class. You would think I would go on YouTube and watch a, a tutorial on how to make a documentary. How to sure. Film. You would think I would do that, but I just, the first time it came around, I was just overwhelmed. I didn't know what I was doing. So mm-hmm. I was making it up as I went. Yeah. So we got all the interviews. I had them all transcribed. Mm-hmm. And then I went through all the transcriptions on paper, printed them all out had a huge stack and highlighted the things I thought we might need. And, and then for people who don't know, you can send your audio to a company and somebody meticulously sits there and types word for word with time code yep. uh, everything in the in the film, which I would not want that job. Um, yeah. But they do have tools like they'll have like a little foot pedal. So like as they're typing, they can push the foot pedal and it puts the time code and like oh, nice. they can do things with their feet to like start, stop and type and stuff. Oh, but, nice. Um, I anyway. know that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but I would still never want that job. <laughs> yeah, but so, so I, would, I would I would get those those transcripts, highlight uh-huh. them, then I would pull all the highlights out. And this is all physical, by the way, yep. with a pin with and a pin. paper. About the third movie, I realized I can do this all on Word. Yeah, I don't yeah, have sure. to do it on paper. Or an I like the paper because I could just take it with me wherever I was. Mm-hmm. I would go. What I would do a lot of times on a nice day, I'd go to the park. Yeah, and I would I would highlight 
at the park. Mm-hmm. You know, just a nice because you know you want to get out of your office sometimes. You, you go crazy in here, yeah. Especially the three and a half months it takes to kind of write this thing. Totally, you're, you're losing your mind, and, and it's just you, and you're all by yourself. And so getting out mm-hmm. a nice, you know, putting it on paper. But I found out I could put it on my Kindle, uh-huh. and I could highlight it on the Kindle, uh-huh. and then I would take all the highlights out and make another document of sure. just the highlights. Then I would highlight it again. Mm-hmm. Then I take all those out, put it on another document. Mm-hmm. Then I highlight it again a third time, uh-huh. very time. And then I took them all, and then I put them on the index evil cards. Index cards. <laughs> And so I would put all these little fragments of, 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 the, of the things that were taken from the, yeah. from the film. And on each index card, I would write where it was from, what interview it was from, and where to find it. You know, 10 minutes and 23 seconds. Mm-hmm. And um, so then I would put the index cards in an index card box. Mm-hmm. And I would maybe write out chapters. Mm-hmm. Now I'm thinking chapters, and I'm going to have chapter headings mm-hmm. of my chapters. And then I would have little index card tabs that had those chapters and those chapter headings. Yeah. Then I started moving things around in my box. Physically. <laughs> Physically picking up, well, this part might go good here at the beginning. Well, no, maybe that would be good here. And I'm moving things around. So I'm kind of moving it in the index card box back and forth, forth and, forth and back. And I'm telling the whole story of my movie now yeah. inside a box. I didn't know that's called a paper edit. Mm-hmm. I sh- went for the Sean to Pierce, the... Uh, laughing in the dark movie i met with a great editor in town named andy curris i showed him everything i did i brought all my my uh transcripts in my index card box and i showed him and he goes you know there's they usually have a staff of about 20 people do this you know that <laughs> yeah, right yeah. i go no uh-huh. so this is called a paper edit i mean he had to tell yeah, me yeah. what it was this Let's, is called a paper edit well how else would they do the bachelor and all these big shows they shoot so much content they have multiple producers who comb over all of it and they do paper edits um, before the editor even gets it, um, that's how you're able to do these multicam big shoots on a like weekly basis. Um, but yeah, we're talking a team of people that do that, um, so it's crazy. But so paper edit, and then from there, once I get my paper edit, then then I just build that. Sure, and that's our starting point. It's usually three hours, and it's <clears throat> way too long, and it's terrible, and it looks, and you go, oh my gosh, what happened? This is terrible. We're in big trouble, and that's when you start. You know, calling yeah, certain actually editing, fine tuning, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so then that's a whole other. That's a whole other. Are there two any, other shows on editing? You know, uh, other than moving things digitally on the Kindle, were there any changes? I mean, you've done five now, and I think you've still kind of kept that as your uh, formula for how you do it. Have you changed anything? Well, yeah, there's some new software that's come out. Called, one's called Transcriptive, and so what it'll do is it will in Premiere it will sync a transcript to your Beautiful. interview. So it syncs it. So I want to, if I want to search for the line, let's say like, for instance, he said the word go, but you couldn't understand it. Uh So I just want to search and find how many times he says the word go and find a good go and take the audio and dub it in. Gotcha. Right. All I got to do is type in the word go and there it is. So, so easy doing it that way. You can find really great way to move around. Anyway, we've gotten into editing now, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Well, speaking of go, I think we do need to go soon, but to finish, uh, our conversation on uh, part two here, audio versus video. I think that's something that a lot of people don't really realize how crucial audio is for uh, a documentary. You can have bad video and you you can make it, but Mm -hmm. if you've got bad audio, you're done. Mm-hmm. Why is that? It. Why is that, you think? <clears throat> well, because if it sounds terrible and you can't understand them, mm-hmm. it's just it's there's it's like, why is it there? Mm-hmm. Um, you have to do a dub. You have to have, a, a, you know, a close caption, close caption underneath. Uh, you, you, so you can't have a whole interview with that. You yeah. just can't do it. Now, you can have an interview that's ugly and you can cover it with B-roll. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there's all these places you can go online to get B-roll. That looks pretty darn good. And yeah. so you can you can cover everything mm-hmm. all day long, but it's got to sound good. So that's so crucial is getting good audio is more important than getting good video. Not that getting good video isn't important. Sure. Lighting, video, all that stuff. That's all great. Mm-hmm. But audio is, is key. 
Audio is king. Absolutely. And again, that's it just ties into your success with this with no experience of being an audio professional for so many years as a music producer. You already had the equipment. You already had the understanding of how to capture good audio. Um, and so, yeah, if you're shooting a documentary, even if you're shooting on your phone, which is totally doable now, did you know the new th- iPhone 13 can shoot ProRes HQ 4K oh 10-bit 444? Okay. On an iPhone. Well, we're out of time. Make sure you have good audio, even if you're shooting on an iPhone. That's the end That's of my it. little statement That's there. That's it. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Dave, for doing this. Oh, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure. Fantastic. And yes, you can find out more about Dave Mays going to uh, Polar Pro Podcast. Yeah, uh, Golden Hour Podcast. Gold, the Golden Hour Podcast. Sorry about that. Polar Pro is the company that owns it. Yeah. The Golden Hour Podcast. Dave, where can they find more info on you? Uh, just go to twitter.com slash Dave Mays or Instagram. Dave Mays. Reach M-A-Z-E. Out to me. M-A-Z-E. David, thanks for being here. Thank you. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.